People use this passage, touch not the Lord's anointed, do my prophets no harm, and so forth, and try to apply it to them. One, this was at the time that it was given, time specific for certain people, but he but and the audience was someone different. And truth be told, and I think we forget about this, this were the this was in regards to true prophets, true people that were anointed by God. But this kind of rings hollow. As a matter of fact, kind of suspicious when you hear T.D. Jake say it. When God anoints a person, no matter what they do, be careful about putting your mouth on them because they belong to God. If it's any bringing down to be done, God will bring them down, not you. Because if you touch what God has anointed, you become an enemy, not of the person, but an enemy of God. Does that even make sense? Touch not what God. Well, first of all, I know of an example of a person that someone did speak about. And this person was truly anointed. Before I get there, though, the question that needs to be asked, though, the people that you think are anointed and they are really God's prophet says who says you? Because there are wolves in sheep's clothing. There are wolves out there who have crept in who might look like they're anointed. So just because you say that you're anointed doesn't mean anything. Uh, the proof oftentimes is going to be in the pudding. But even still, are we not allowed to put our mouths on someone else? When God anoints a person, no matter what they do. If that's the case, Paul violates that because Paul does that to Cephas who is Peter, he says in chapter two, verse 11 of Galatians, he says, but when Cephas came, that's Peter, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For prior to coming of certain men from James, he used to eat meat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision, that is fearing the Jews, for the rest of the Jews joined him in his hypocrisy with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. Uh, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, that's what he says, uh, I said to Cephas in the presence of all, if you are being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews. How is it that you compel the Gentiles to live, live like the Jews? In other words, he's confronting Peter. He's putting his mouth on him. And this is done publicly, not just for them in a private session, but we have this account in the most public book ever. That is the Bible. So did he violate this? But then notice what Mr. Jake said. God anoints a person, no matter what they do, be careful about putting your mouth on them because they belong to God. No matter what they do. So they can do anything, anything, and we can't say anything about it. We can't deal, as Paul says, to judge the people inside the church. We can't deal with that, really, because we don't see that in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, what they don't do is what he won't do is give an actual scripture to back up his point. However, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, Paul says, so he says, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness. No, so no matter what they do, even if they're unfruitful deeds of darkness, Paul says, but instead even expose them. Jake says, don't. Paul says, do. Let's go with, let's go with Paul. If it's any bringing down to be done, God will bring them down, not you. Now, I will agree with him on that point. The Bible does not call us to bring anyone down, but to expose that person. Now, God might use a person to bring another person down or whatever. But our job, if we see a, her a heretic or some heresy, is not to say, you know, it's my life mission, mission to bring that person down. No, because we don't see that in the Bible. That would be God's doing. Now, he's likely going to use other men or he could just use something, a natural disaster. He can use that person's health, what have you. God is not limited to what, to what means he might use, but... I'll agree with him on that. It's not our job to bring someone down because we don't see anyone else. But we do see Paul warning people of other people. As a matter of fact, on Paul's deathbed in 2 Timothy 4, he warns about bad teaching, unsound doctrine, and then even calls out people by name, such as Alexander. Because if you touch what God has anointed, you become an enemy, not of the person, but an enemy of God. Simply calling out someone's sin or calling out someone's error in the scriptures or their heresy, that doesn't make you an enemy of God, even if the person is well-meaning, because you're never anointed to do or to commit some sort of heresy. And again, who's determining who the anointed person is? Oftentimes, it's the very person that's either caught in a sin or the person that has given some sort of gross misrepresentation of the scriptures or heresy 
that they will come back and say, or their friends might say, don't put your mouth on God's anointed. The Bible says, though, we should contend for the faith, earnestly contend for the faith. And so even though that T.D. Jakes has a large following, God has a bigger and better following, a more powerful following. Let's go with what the scriptures say and not with what this person is saying. Amen. <music>